This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and this is head coach Brian Callahan. Welcome back to the OTP. It's good to be back. We wanted to, you know, before we let you go, you've experienced a lot of questions maybe once or twice or three or four or seven or eight times. And so, Mike, you have the list, I, I have think. the list of the questions <laughs> that you, you have gotten most often. Uh, uh, let me just run them down okay. here. I, I probably he got can a probably good. play this game, I, too, yeah. I right. think. What's it like to work with your dad? By far, number one. How is Will Levis doing? Yep. A variety of offensive line questions. Yep. A lot of questions about Traylon Burks. A lot of questions. Uh, yeah. Since he got here, a lot of questions about Tyler Boyd. Yes. Players not participating in voluntary workouts and your opinion on that. Yep. Wanting to know where Tavondre Sweat is and is he okay. Yes. A lot of um, those. <laughs> A lot of questions about how you're going to handle play calling. Yeah. Seems like every reporter who comes into town wants to ask the the play calling question. Yes. That one's And up then a the what's your message? What's your message leading into the draft? What's your message going into OTAs? What's your message in minicamp? What's your message into the offseason? What's your message into training camp? I mean, these are all legitimate questions. I there mean, it's are. it's very much part of the job. And I guess that's the that's the thing you were getting to is this is the job. This is the job and just maybe something you didn't think about as much when you're taking that job is yeah. that you're going to get the same question hundreds of times it yeah, feels that's, like. Yeah, that's been the one that that's definitely been one that you just don't think about. You think about media and you have to do all these it's all part of the job, but the repetitiveness of I feel like I've answered the same question a lot. Um and then you also feel like and this is no you know, don't disrespect, it's just different when you talk to the national people versus the local people. And so the national people all ask very, very, very similar questions. And the local guys have, and, and women that, that cover the team are much more uh, aware of some things. And so they don't ask the same ones. Like they kind of know what questions have been asked, and but you get the same national sure. questions a lot. And so it's, I never thought about that, but I've noted as my media availability went along the spring, I was like, I wonder what question I have to answer about trailing the day. I wonder how many times I've talked about my dad. <laughs> it happened a lot. It happened a lot. <laughs> Did I leave any out? <laughs> no, those were the ones. We Ashley <laughs> Farrell and I went through them this morning, and we tried yeah. to to come up with all of. Them. But that's the that's the part of this is even though you're the most prepared first time head coach I've ever been around well, in thank you. in any sport. Well, I've I've just never seen anybody with. The background you have and what you were allowed to do coming up, and obviously your dad having been a head coach, but there's still stuff you don't know. And that mm -hmm. just like your, your first year when you just go off to college, there's stuff people just can't tell you that you have to experience. That's great. Yeah, that is correct. I felt like there, I've, I've done this long enough and I've been around football long enough. And I've, as I've said before about just the access I was allowed in Cincinnati with Zach and how much he allowed me to, to – see behind the curtain a little bit where not a lot of you know head coaches allow that sort of access to the day-to-day -day. and so I felt like I was probably more prepared than most people would be for the for the job and it's it certainly paid off I've, I feel that you know especially early on early on I felt it where there was some things that had I not been exposed to that stuff would have probably thrown me a little bit off just because you don't no. Sure. <laughs> um, and then there's still things even even to this day that come up that you're like, well, I didn't I didn't think about that. That one that one's new. I wasn't <laughs> ready, I wasn't quite ready for that particular situation. But um it's been fun though. That the the part of it that's been cool is that I haven't felt it's never felt overwhelming. I've never felt like I was unprepared. If that makes sense. It totally mm -hmm. makes sense. And um and it just I've I feel like one of the strengths of my personality is I I, I can generally take things in stride and I think you have to be able to do that as a head coach because there's so many things that you don't anticipate that can come up in the course of a day that you woke up in the morning and you never thought that, that would be something you'd be dealing with that day so uh, yeah it's a it's a it's a wild job it really is <laughs> <laughs> it's a really it is fun though when you're thinking about being a head coach one day one of the things I'm sure 
that crosses your mind is putting together your staff and mm-hmm. who I would have as this coach or that coach and this thing. After you have those thoughts, I would assume, because the way I would do it, that's my only frame of reference, is that it would almost exist in a vacuum. Like, I want my wide receivers coach to be this person. I want my coordinator to be this person. Are you then surprised when you get them all together and it's like, oh, these are this is working. These guys all get along really well. Is, it, is that maybe a line that you don't always draw when you're just imagining what you will be like as a head coach? This is actually a fun conversation. I was just having this conversation with um, Denard the other day. Is he's, you know, you hit this time of year and you're a coordinator around the league. This is kind of the time of year you prep for potential interviews, whether it's at the end of the season or two years from now. You just, this is the time of year where you can take a minute and step away from your job and actually focus on maybe what, what could be coming your way. And I had a long conversation about the staffing process. And it's, I think, the one that makes or breaks a lot of guys in the interview process. And, um, I think if you ask Rand about how I presented my vision for it, I think it was probably one that um, resonated and it felt prepared. But I'll, the thing about the staff, I'll say this, is that I spent a ton of time thinking about the people. And I never got locked into one person, um, which I think some people do. You get this is, I want this guy and this guy only. Um, I had four or five guys in each spot that I felt comfortable with. Um but I spent also a ton of time thinking about how they fit with their, their personalities with the guys that how it would all work. I spent a, a lot of time thinking about that. And um, I think it paid off because I think if you, you round our staff and as you guys have gotten to know them and you see us interact on the field, um, it's a, it's a really fun group of guys to be around and they're really good at their job. But I just think that that's a, that I was very intentional with hiring in the staff and the type of people I wanted. I, I focused more on like personality traits than I did specific people. And, uh, I think that helped. I think that helped to help me build a, a really a staff that I'm real proud of. And, and as we've gotten together, I'm, I'm even more excited about now than I think I was when I hired them after I watched them all work for an off season. And it's a, it's a, fantastic coaching staff. Well, what made me think about that is we've had the opportunity to get to know a lot of the assistant coaches and coordinators within the staff, and every single one of them has mentioned that they genuinely enjoy the other people that they are Mm -hmm. coaching with. They actually are friends with and like working with the people they're working with. And you don't always get that within a coaching staff, especially people offering it up like Mm -hmm. that so easily. How important is it to have that chemistry within the coaching staff? Because I would guess that it is just as important, if not more important, than having the chemistry within the football team. I think they, I think they go together. Um, I think when you hire a staff that that's cohesive and connected, and is all pulling the same direction, and 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 wants to be a part of it, and and guys that are uh, unselfish in in the same sense that you're looking for from your players. Um, my first goal when I hired the staff was I wanted our, our staff to embody what I wanted our team to look like, um, how we interacted, how we communicated, what type of personality guys have, the mixes of personalities. And I, I, th- I felt like if I hired the right people and I hired good people, that the team would feel that. And they would also, when they walked in the building, interacted with the staff, they would feel that we were operating under the same really tenants that I wanted our team to operate under. And so all this comes together and all the players come in the building and it really worked exactly like I hoped it would work uh, for the players to see and feel our interaction. And just like you would with kids, you try to model behavior. And so the hope and the goal was that our coaching staff would model the same behavior we want our team to have. And, um, you know, through the first, this off season, it's, it's really worked about as good as I could have hoped for. And I think that it was, um, it was intentional though. I, I, I wanted to, I've spent a lot of time trying to get the right people and the right mix of personalities so that our players would feel the same thing. Well, they like you and they like each other. So I think it's, it's working. Start. Yeah. So it's far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. Amy made a great point about the staff cohesion and the fact that we've had a chance to meet them. And mm-hmm. every head coach doesn't do that. I mean, you, you've certainly known some that the assistant coaches basically don't talk. Mm-hmm. They're in the background. The head coach is totally in the foreground, and that's it. So 
you obviously made the decision that it would be different because we've gotten a chance to talk to all of these people, men and women, up and down the football staff throughout the last five months. And then the other thing, too, is Denard Wilson is a, is a rising star in the business. Yeah. And it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, that you are very comfortable with his star being shown in a way maybe like Zach Taylor was with you in Cincinnati? Oh, I, I think that's that's probably a good comparison. I think that um, I think Zach and I have very similar personalities, and I think that's why we work so well together. Um, but Zach Zach does not have Zach is like the most egoless person I've ever been around, um, and I think that takes a tremendous amount of self confidence. And I've always admired that about him. And I think that at the end of the day, you you want to be around a bunch of people that don't really care about getting the credit. I don't care who gets the credit. I just want to have a good football team that puts a good product out there and we win games and people are excited about it. Whoever gets the credit, whoever gets the the shine, it doesn't matter to me. I really don't care about that. And I, I, I encourage guys to be put out there. I want people to see what kind of coaches we have. And, and I hope that Denard gets to be a head coach in this league sooner than later, because I think he'll be a fantastic one. But to me, it's it's always I think good leadership and uh, is always about trying to help prop other people up. And I think that I learned that from Zach. He was great to me and, and allowed me the same access uh, for that. And hopefully, you guys feel the same way here. But the credit to me doesn't really matter. I just want to have a good football team and a good coaching staff. And as guys get credit and and we play well, then I hope they get all the glory. <laughs> I don't I don't need it. Why is Denard Wilson such a rising star? in the coaching business? Well, I, I think first and foremost, he's got great technical knowledge of, of, of defensive football, both in the in the front, in the run game, and then uh, his expertise obviously is, is the secondary. Um, been a part of really good, productive secondaries, and that's what wins in the NFL these days is you better be pretty good against the pass, and everywhere he's been, he, they have been. So um, that's the first kind of baseline is, is he's an excellent football coach on the technical side, the schematic side. Um, and then he's got a presence about him, as you see. He's – uh, he's really great in front of a room. He's got a he's got a command, um, and he's got a, a very unique way of being direct and honest and truthful um, in a way that doesn't offend people. If that I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but he can get up in front of those guys and he can coach them hard and he can be critical, and they walk out of the room loving them more than they did when they walked in. And it's just it's just part of his personality, and he's. Um, but that's what a great teacher does. I would agree with that. Yeah, I would agree with that. And you think so, about your teachers in school yeah. and the people who could say, now, I want to see you do better here because you're capable in this way. You know, you would walk out and go, okay, I don't want to disappoint Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so mm -hmm. in this. That's probably a good comparison for him. He, but he's, and, he's, and then on top of that, he's hyper competitive. I love <laughs> competing against him in practice. Um, it doesn't take much to get him riled up. All you got to do is have Tyke run over there and start yelling at him about the – uh, some pass completion and then R gets mad and then it's just, <laughs> it's competitive. And he's, he's a, he's a, he's a top level competitor and that, that part, the players feel as well. And so, um, everything about how he, how he goes about his business, how he leads the co his coaching staff on defense, how he leads the players, how he teaches, um, all those things are going to lead. I mean, he's, he'll be a head coach in this league sooner than later. If, if we have any of the success that I think we're capable of having, um, that's something that's probably coming for him. Um, pretty quickly. So I hope it does. He's, he'll, he'll, he'll have earned it and be deserving of it. All of those traits, though, that you were just describing, when you're talking about modeling, lack of ego, competitiveness, um, uh, being held accountable, held to a high standard, those are all things that are existing within this coaching staff and with a roster that has some guys with some established reputations already on it. Seeing those traits has to be helpful on the field. So far, it's it has. Um, I've felt that from our team. I've seen that in their actions, the way they work, uh, the way that they come into the building every day are all things that um, echo all of the things that I feel about our coaching staff. I've seen in our players, and I think they appreciate it. I think they they appreciate the style, um, they appreciate the messaging, um, and I think they believe in in what we represent, both as as teachers and as people. And I think they see the potential in the in the roster in their teammates and then you add the scheme parts of it in all three phases and uh, I think you got a bunch of guys that that believe in what we're doing 
as you have come into this, who is a player or players that you didn't really know who has been a, a pleasant surprise from the leadership standpoint, on the field, in the weight room, whatever. Give me a guy or guys mm-hmm. that jump out in that way. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll give you two that, that really have jumped out to me. Um, I think that Arden Key has been fantastic. Uh, I love everything about how he practices and works and his personality is infectious. He's got some you know, real leadership traits on top of it. And He's just been really fun to be around, and, and I think he b- provides a lot of uh, energy to the team, and I think they enjoy you, – you, you, I mean, he never stops. You hear Arden all day long, and uh, I enjoy that. I like it. I think it's a great thing. Um, and then Jack Gibbons, I think, has really stood out to me is, you know, he's he's a hyper-competitive, and he's really taken on a leadership role on the defense, and just – I didn't know anything really about him until – I knew who he was, but I didn't know much about him. And this over this process of the spring has been eye opening to me. I mean, I think he's really, um, you know, he's kind of one of the first ones that starts talking. I mean, he's he's got some, he's got something to him. He's got an edge to him, and I think that um, he's been one that I've been really enjoyed seeing him kind of bloom a little bit in a leadership role. He keeps getting better. Mm-hmm. He has since the day he's been here, and people kind of underestimate him. They underestimate his athleticism yep. overall. And then you just – you watch and you're like, that guy's pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's how he's come across to me is, yeah. is I, I just – I knew he got – I watched him play a little bit, obviously, last year when he got thrust in there and played pretty well. And and you just – you know, his his track record, undrafted free agent, all these things that he's kind of come – overcome to get to this spot. And you go, man, that's been pretty impressive. And then every day it's like, oh, that was pretty good. And – you know, he makes play on the ball and then he's, he's in where he's, he's where he's supposed to be. And there's just, um, there's a consistency that he's starting to develop. And I think that that goes a long way too, where he's sort of the same, he's got the same energy, the same guy every day. And then he still continues to execute what's asked of him schematically. And I think that that's how guys play a long time in this league. Oh, we left one out. Oh, who's going to wear the green dot. Oh, <laughs> we man. Left you did that. You did we that we, we left that one. You, yeah. That's yeah. a great one. Yeah, we left that out. Could Rats. Jack Gibbons be the guy who wears the green dot? Yeah, I think I think all those guys, I think him and him and Kenneth, I think both are fully capable of of doing that job and being a, uh in that communicator role and I think I've said before too that it's it is uh it's st- defensive communication is still an 11 person job they're, they're they don't all just come from one person they all talk at different points and they talk to safeties and corners talk so there's there's a lot more communication that goes on than just the guy that gives the call you know before the snap which is which is great you got to have that guy too but there's a lot more to it than that but yeah there's a lot of that was a that's a heavy topic of conversation around here. The I'm green so dot. disappointed in us. That was, <laughs> that was a good That's on me. Yeah. Uh, I knew I'd left one off. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. I'm sorry. I apologize, OTP. Oh, you. I'm that's sorry. okay. You found it eventually. Yes, we got to it, though. We did. <laughs> we yeah. hit it. Like we hit it eventually. 84 minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you, or maybe a couple people, are you most excited to see finally put pads on? Ah. Mm, that's a good one. Um I am very excited to see Tavondre Sweat put pads on. That was always a good one. Um, Will he be available? Let me look at the, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was looking here. Yeah, that's, that's number six. That's, that's number six. Yeah, him. I think uh, seeing JC in pads is going to be fun. Um, he's had a really nice, really nice off season, and just to see a, a guy of his size and strength actually be able to, you know, come off the ball and hit and and do things that linemen do will be fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard. Those guys, I think, are really going to be fun players to watch play in training camp and in the preseason as we get started. Those guys, I'm, I'm excited to see, and um, you know, I think there's there's going to be some fun battles on the offensive line on the right side, which will be, you know, pads will come on, and that'll be very telling and revealing of of what that'll look like over the course of camp. So, um, the first day of pads is always kind of my favorite day of the football calendars. It's like okay, football's it's we're back, we're playing football again. So. Um, but those guys, I think for sure, are, are the ones that that I'd be I'm looking forward to seeing. Before I went down the green dot rabbit hole, I I was going to follow with you. You mentioned Jack Gibbons is a player that you've had a chance to watch, and Arden Key, the, these guys who have really done a good job. I wondered if you would say John Ajuku. Yeah, that's a good one. He that's he's been really impressive. I think um, given an opportunity because of some injuries to 
show what he's all about. And, and he's about everything you want um, your offensive lineman to be about. And he's, he's engaged in the meeting room. It matters. It's important to him. And the best way I can explain this is when he's playing with, he's been playing with the, the one group for, you know, the last handful of practices and, you don't notice that he's out there. And I mean that in a very complimentary way is that he doesn't look out of place. He doesn't make any mistakes. Um, he does things right enough to where you feel like he belongs there, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, and so that's, you know, and again, we haven't played any football yet, but what he's done with the opportunity has been he has been given has been very impressive, you know, for a guy that nobody even probably really knew his name before the offseason program started. And, and he's he's slowly but surely uh, made sure people know who he is. And you know, sometimes a, a door opens, and if you, you you sprint through it, there you go. <laughs> sometimes that's how it works. That's how it works. Um, and so I'm I'm very excited to see what he looks like as well. And you know, again, he's hasn't played a ton, and and he's going to have some opportunities to to play. And you know, I hope he takes advantage of it because he's the kind of guy you, you root for guys like him. You know, that that do things right and uh, approach their job the right way, and, and you hope that they can capitalize on it. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So, Titans fans can fan. Brian Callahan, thanks so much for joining us on the OTP. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. It's kind of fun to come here at the end of the offseason program. Here we go. Well, you know, we're here to put a bow on things and yeah, then I'd shoot you it. forward. That's what we it. do here. For Amy Wells and Coach Brian Callahan, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you, the OT people, for joining us for the OTP.